Let's talk about Ruby for a second, okay? Um, Ruby, the queen of gemstones, tends to be one of the most expensive gems in terms of price per carat, especially when it comes from one of the most famous localities or sources in the world and when it is eye clean, when it doesn't have inclusions that you can see with your naked eye. A friend of mine was shopping on one of those popular auction-based websites that you probably have all heard of and said, Gigi, I have got a great story for you. I just bought a natural Burmese ruby, untreated, for $2. <laughs> she said, hey, I know that this probably isn't a natural Burmese ruby, which by the way, can go for upwards of $100,000 a carat for um, top gem quality clean material with good color. But I wanna know what it is. Time for Professor Gigi to uh, check it out and come up with what exactly this mystery gemstone is. So you can see it's really large. It, it actually weighs 17.7 .7 carats. So that's the first clue that this probably for $2 wasn't a real ruby, right? Um, but the color looks right. You know, it's not a um, like a wine bread color like you would expect some garnets to be. It is... Um, you know, very clean, which I would not expect in a ruby of this size. In fact, it would be very unusual to find, I think, a ruby this size with that kind of color and clarity. And if you did, it would probably be in a museum. You know what I'm saying? Um, but here are the steps that I take as a gemologist to determine what this gemstone is. First and foremost, and I can't stress this enough because it's something that even professional gemologists forget to do, is observation of the stone with your naked eye. So looking at it, I see that it's super clean. I see that it doesn't have the world's greatest faceting. There are some very uneven facets on the pavilion, which I know it's hard for you to see because I can't get the stone and me in focus at the same time here. But um, I would expect a, a natural ruby, particularly a Burmese one, which for thousands of years has been the finest source of the very best rubies in the world. I would expect that to um, have been cut very, very carefully by an experienced gem, a gem cutter, an experienced lapidary, or a jewelry house, uh, like one of those big fine jewelry houses um, with like a staff of cutters. There would have been planning on how to cut it uh, to maximize the yield from the rough material and uh, create the most beautiful gemstone that you could. In a way, this would have been wasted a little bit because they didn't maximize the brilliance of the stone with cutting it the right way. So the first thing I would uh, probably do after looking at it with my naked eye, I'm gonna use a loop. Now I like using a lighted loop. Woo, sorry to blind you, but I really feel that this helps me not only um, see the inclusions a little bit better because you're shooting some light down into the stone, but it also help, really helps me observe kind of the surface quality of the stone. Are the facet edges abraded? Are there pits in the surface that would show up kind of shadowed if I'm shining a light on it? So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. And what I see here, two things uh, are interesting here. Number one, it seems like the facet edges are a little bit abraded. So that might mean that it's glass. Red glass is a common, uh, commonly used to simulate gemst uh, natural gemstones. And also I see some curved striations okay and that's very important we're going to talk about that in a minute because that can be um, a great sign that what you're looking at is corundum so corundum of course it is both sapphire and ruby ruby is just the red variety of sapphire of, of your corundum right um, the other thing immediately when i see a red stone i know that i'm going to use my spectroscope and that's very important to, uh, to know how to do. Um, I think that um, I have one in here. Yes, I do. Okay, so a spectroscope, basically um, each gemstone absorbs certain colors of the visible light spectrum, and um, that determines the gemstone's body color, that red color, right? And it turns out that depending on what the ingredients, the chemical formula, the chemical composition of this stone is, is going to impact the way that the, that light gets absorbed or reflected back to your naked eye. So what we 
what we can see here, this is a sheet from my FGA homework, <laughs> and you can see different spectrums. This is what it looks like when I hold this instrument, a spectroscope, up to your eye. And basically what I'm going to do is hold the stone up to some light, so light is transmitting through the stone, and see if I can observe any of these spectrums. And each of these gems is a different stone. So you'll see down here, that is our almondine garnet spectrum. This is going to be spinel. There's a whole other grouping of red gems like red glass that's colored, believe it or not, we have several types of red glass. Red glass colored by colloidal gold, red glass colored by rare earth elements, um, all, all kinds of different types of red glass. And of course, this is really what we're looking for here. This is your ruby. And uh, you can see what I really want to show you is this line and this line. So. This line, which occurs at 650 nanometers on the spectrum, is called an absorption line, and that indicates that chromium is present. You'll see that this one looks like it's glowing. That is an emission line. It's actually fluorescing because of the amount of chromium inside the gem. So remember that um, ruby tends to fluoresce if it, uh, because it's colored by chromium, unless it has a high iron content. The iron can inhibit the fluorescence of the stone. So right away, if we're trying to test to see if this is ruby, we know that number one, we're gonna try and check for some fluorescence. Check, that is glowing a bright, beautiful pigeon's blood red, just as if it were a Burmese ruby. And of course, when you have a synthetic ruby, um, we add chromium to the titanium and uh, other elements that we're adding to a sapphire mixture to create that perfect gem. So it is going to fluoresce. We're gonna, in fact, it's so nice that when we grow a synthetic gem, we can control the ingredients. So we're gonna make sure there's no iron in there because having that amount of chromium, having that fluorescence, it's actually so strong that it can um, start to glow in the daylight because there's a UV component to the, the light wavelengths in natural light. So basically, this uh, is gonna glow. We want the glow. We want it to look like it's glowing. And of course, it's gonna have strong fluorescence. That's the first clue that it might be ruby. Now, and you'll have to forgive me, this is a little tough to do with only two hands. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take my incandescent light, and I'm not doing this perfectly right. What I should do is have a much smaller light, and I should really make sure uh, when I'm testing this that um, uh, that when I use the spectroscope, I'm only looking at light coming through the gem because if I look at the um, just the plain white light, it's going to mess up my spectrum. Now I always freak out on which which end to use. There we go. Uh, wrong end. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to hold this pretty much right up to the stone, and what I'm seeing, believe it or not is absolutely diagnostic and conclusive that what we have here is a ruby. Because what I see when I look in there, and I wish I, wish I could just like show you uh, what I saw, but what I saw was absolutely this one, okay? This line here at 650 was extremely distinct. I saw this banding over here in the blue, and then black, black, black uh, to round out the spectrum. So. I know 100% this is a ruby. Now, is it a natural ruby or a synthetic ruby? That's the secondary question, okay? Now, obviously, let's use our common sense. She bought it for $2. We could, of course, weigh it with a carat weight scale. We know that this happens to weigh 17.7 .7 carats at $100,000 a carat for top gem quality like this, this would probably cost somewhere in the range of, you know, almost a million dollars probably. So definitely three quarters of a million for sure. So this is probably not gonna be sold on that one website for $2, right? So, plus we know that it's extraordinarily clean with even color, great clarity, um, really nice saturation of color. And remember what I was talking about with those curved striations, okay? That is another indicative telltale sign. If you know you have corundum, you know you have ruby or sapphire, the first thing, one of the things that you're looking for inside, a natural sapphire or ruby would have angular 
zoning like this. Okay, that's natural. You can see it's almost hexagonal in its shape. Now, if I had a synthetic, and this might be a little bit um, awkward cause, and, and confusing because it's a, a sapphire, not a ruby, but it, look at this synthetic sapphire. Can you see that those curves right here, they're banded, they're curved. The curved striations are, is what tells us that it is a synthetic ruby rather than a natural. So despite, and I'm gonna cover up the logo, despite what this lab says about this gem, we have used our skills of gemstone identification to prove that this is incorrect. They said that it was 17.7 carats, Burmy origin Burma, species corundum, and it says natural. A natural, you can see right there, natural ruby, natural ruby. So, what does this tell us? You have to be so careful. Just because it comes with a lab report doesn't mean that that's accurate. You have to buy from a trusted source. It gets even worse, okay? Let's say that you did trust that this lab report was correct. On the back of the lab report, uh, it's in some legalese, but what it says is that this gem was examined by this uh, particular lab under 10x magnification. Well, 10x magnification, they didn't even use a microscope. They just used a loop. Okay, that's problem number one. Problem number two is that it says, uh, okay, if, if, okay, the parties, so the buyer and the seller, the parties recognize that the opinions may reasonably vary regarding characteristics covered in this report. Okay, and hence this lab or any member of the lab or its staff at any time may not be held responsible for any discrepancy which may result from the application of other grading methods. So if you used a microscope or a spectroscope like we did and figured out that it was something other than a natural ruby, guess what? You've agreed that that's reasonable. And lastly, this is the best part, this report shall be governed by Indian judicial systems and all matters, disputes, or references to this gem shall be subject to jurisdiction with the state of Delhi only. Now, I have great respect for the legal world. I actually am a former attorney myself, but I don't want to schlep all the way to India in order to bring a case against this lab if I've paid $750,000 for what I thought was a natural ruby. So when you're purchasing gems, particularly the rare ones, the expensive ones, the most desirable ones, like a natural Burmese ruby, you have got to go to a trusted source. That's why I encourage you to shop with me at JTV or JTV.com. We have a loose gemstone webcast uh, that I host every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time. But you can watch by visiting jtv.com or of course you can go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash jtvggmarco. I love, uh, I love the fact that JTV stands behind our product. We go through stringent quality control to ensure that what we are providing you is what we say it is. We go to accredited labs. Uh, we have a lab right here in the building. We are very, very, very dedicated to bringing you exactly what we say it is. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little exercise and hey, if you've got a stone that can stump me, send it on over to me and let's uh, do some gemstone detective work. That's it for this time. Have a great night. Bye.